Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to set up and use your true stitch regulator. Uh, and this video, although I'm going to be using the Crescendo sewing machine, this video applies to the Crescendo, the Aria, the Journey, the Unity, the Symphony, the Elegante, and the Elissimo. So if you have any of those machines and a true stitch regulator, this video is for you. Um, I'm going to go through the initial setup, uh, all the way through everything you have to do in order to um, use your true stitch regulator. So let's get to it. Okay, first I'm just going to go through all the bits and pieces that you can get with the true stitch. Um, this unit right here, this is the actual true stitch regulator itself. This is what does all the computations. It's got some buttons on the front. Uh, we're going to go through the functionality of these in a little bit. Um, there's a screen here. On yours, you can peel this screen protector off. I'm just leaving mine on because I will probably sell my floor model at some point. If you look on the back, we've got these different ports, and they're all labeled. you get DC in. That's where the power gets plugged in. Foot control goes to the foot control. Machine, there's a little cord that plugs in here and then plugs into the sewing machine. USB charger, this is a regular USB port that you use to charge the hockey puck over here. This is what I'm going to be referring to as the hockey puck. Uh, and that is, uh, is able to be charged. And this is your power button off and on. Okay, so here's your true stitch regulator unit itself. So the various cords that you have with it. This is the end of the AC adapter cord. The other end is already plugged into um, an outlet. It just looks like a regular wall plug. Uh, but we're going to take this, and this gets plugged into the DC in port on the back, like so. This white cable is used exclusively for charging your hockey puck. Okay, This end goes in the regulator, this end goes in the hockey puck. This is the port that it goes into on the hockey puck. It just plugs straight in. It'll only go one way, so you don't have to worry that you're going to do it wrong. Plug that in there, plug this in here, and if it's plugged in, the light will turn blue if it is charging. So my light was blue for a second, it turned off because my thing is fully charged, so it didn't need to be powered up. But if you plug it in, the light turns blue, that means it's charging. I'm just going to take this cord and put it aside here. Okay, so this black cord, we've got what looks like a little yellow end here. This plugs into the machine end on this port here, this goes into the machine port. And the other end of this cord, looks like an RCA jack, plugs into the full control port on your sewing machine. Whichever sewing machine you have, it plugs into the same US and plugs into the one that's labeled for the foot control. Um, and we have the foot control for the sewing machine here. I'm just gonna put this on the floor. Instead of putting this in the sewing machine, I'm going to put it into the port labeled foot control on the true stitch regulator. Okay. Um, now it's hooked up. I've got the foot control plugged in, the machine plugged into the true stitch, and we're ready to begin. All right, so I also have to get my sewing machine ready to do uh, free motion embroidery. So I'm going to turn the machine on. Lights up and sings me its little song. All right, so uh, I want to make sure that I have the needle up. So I'm going to hit my needle up button on my machine. Needle is up. And the presser foot up. Okay. Now I need to unscrew the shank adapter from the shank. Here we have my presser foot. I'm going to put this aside. And I'm going to be using the open toe foot, the O foot, um, but the, any free motion foot is what you're looking for here. So I'm just going to attach this to the machine. Let's screw it in nice and tight. There we go. Okay. And there's one final part. What do I do with it? Ah, here it is. There's one final part. Let me zoom out a little. Oop, hit my tripod there. Zoom out a little bit. And that is the True Glide Overlay. This is a 
overlay that is rolled up and it has a hole cut in it to fit over the hole in the needle plate. So you just put it on here. There we go. And this is very important. If you don't put this thing on, the hockey puck doesn't track correctly. Um, so it not only makes the surface of the table more slippery, but it also makes it so that the uh, hockey puck can track right. So uh, without it, it's not going to work very well. Okay, so that's that. And now we're ready to look at the machine and tell it that we want to do free motion. So on all the machines that work with this, there is a button on the screen that drops the feed dogs. And on the crescendo, let's see if I can't reposition the camera to get a better angle here. On the crescendo, it's this button right here. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's going to drop my feed dogs and set the machine so that it is ready for doing free motion. And actually, if you look at what foot it's telling me to use, it's that O, open toe free motion foot. So I have it set up exactly the way it wants me to have it set up. And now I'm going to turn my machine off. That's because there's a specific order that they recommend you set your machine up when you're going to do the true stitch. And that is uh, easy to remember because it's smallest to largest. So we're going to go smallest to largest and turn on first the hockey puck. It starts flashing wildly. We turn on the true stitch regulator itself. Okay, and then we're going to go and turn on the machine. Just waiting. If everything is right, you should see. blue lights on the front of your little true stitch regulator thing. See how all three of those lights are blue? That means all three of the components are working. If you get one of them's red, a lot of times it's because this guy's out of charge. It needs to be charged. So plug that guy in and charge him up. Um, and sometimes it just loses communication um, for seemingly random reasons. Um, it can be like a microwave running can mess it up. Um, uh, some other wireless frequencies can mess it up. Um, so if it stops working, um, or you just can't get it to connect at all. I have found, even though they tell you to do smallest to largest, that's the right order. Okay. Um, I have found that sometimes if you turn this thing off, put it next to it and turn it back on, it'll like resume communications. Uh, so try that if you're having an issue with it. Um, but otherwise do it in the right order, uh, cause it generally works for me to do it in that order. So why wouldn't it work for you? So, uh, now we're going to go ahead and actually use this thing. I'm going to uh, get some fabric because I forgot to bring some over. Okay, so I've got my quilt sandwich here. I'm just going to put it under the foot. There we go. Nice, pretty brown quilt. Delightful. Now, the way you work this thing, this is a magnet. This part is a magnet. And this part is like an optical mouse, uh, like a mouse that you would use to move your, uh, your computer around and, and, uh, and do stuff with. Uh, so I'm going to take this. You put this under here, and that's what's going to track your movements. And you put the magnet on top to hold it in place. Now, <laughs> kicking my tripod. Ugh. All right, so now to start, all I have to do, well, you know what, before I start, I'm going to show uh, and explain what some of these buttons mean on the true stitch. Let me see if I can't pivot this over here a little bit. All right, so uh, <clears throat> this is the, the screen on your true stitch regulator. So this number here is how many stitches per inch you have selected, and this SPI choice will allow me to increase or decrease that. So 12 stitches per inch, say. Now the cruise setting. What the cruise setting is is it's how fast the machine is going to run no matter how fast you're moving the fabric. So it's kind of like a constant speed. And then uh, if you go faster, it's going to take up and, and go faster. Um, the reason that you want to do that is because when you go around curves, you never want the machine to actually stop. Uh, so if you get around that curve, when you get to the very end of the curve, if the machine stops, then the needle's going to be down. So you want to have some level of cruise on. 
um, while you're using this. And the faster you are, the faster you set your cruise. It goes anywhere from zero uh, to uh, 50%, which is half speed on the machine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with my cruise on, say, 25, and we'll see how that does for me. Now, you can turn the regulator on and off with this, too. You can do regulated and manual. If you put it on manual, get a big M, and it's not doing anything. Regulated puts it back in regulated mode. One other thing I want to comment on is you want to absolutely have your machine speed selector all the way to the right, okay? If it's all the way over here, the machine can't go any faster than that, and it's going to seem like it's not working. So if it's not working, check that. Make sure you've got your speed control set correctly. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and point my camera over at my fabric and start going. Okay, so I'm ready to begin. Uh, I'm going to lower my presser foot and hit my gas pedal down here and go. Notice the faster I move, the faster the machine goes. So I start moving quick, the machine starts moving quick. It can still only ever go, it can still only ever go its maximum speed though. So there's a certain point where you're going to hit, it's just going to not be able to go any faster and your stitches won't be regulated. So you still have to kind of pay attention to how fast you're going. And um, I'm going to hit, just hit the gas and not move it. This is my cruise speed. That's how fast it's going to go no matter what. So I hit it. So I want to move faster than that. So like I said, you can set that cruise speed to whatever you're comfortable with. I'm no quilter, by the way, so you know this isn't going to be any kind of magical work of art or anything. But it is how it works. Faster I go, faster it goes. That's really it. I mean, that's that's how it works. You um, you put it in and you go. Uh, when it's time to reposition your, your true stitch guy, you just unhook this, move it up a little farther, and continue on going. Okay, here's one thing though that I see a lot of people doing. I'm glad I remembered this before I stopped this video. Um, what you want to make sure that you do when you're using this is move along an X, Y axis. I mean, left and right and up and down, um, or you can go diagonally too. But what you don't want to do is rotate. You can't rotate your fabric like this because if you look at the way this works, this needle, if I'm rotating like this, the needle's not going anywhere, right? The needle's staying in the same place. But my regulator is swinging around. The regulator thinks that the machine is moving really fast right now when really the needle's not going anywhere. So you want to make sure that you keep it going evenly and not do this. See that stitching in place? That's not, that's not right. So you want to avoid doing that. If you start doing this, then your stitches are going to start getting real tiny because the machine thinks you're going faster than you really are. So you want to concentrate and make sure that you don't do that. Make sure you keep it square. Keep it square and you'll be good. All right, um, that's it. I mean, for the basics, you know, I, I can't really teach you how to do free motion because I'm not a quilter. I can just teach you how to set the thing up and 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 go from there. So hopefully, this will get some of you guys that have the True Stitch regulator sitting in a box somewhere, get it out and uh, start playing with it because it's it's not that hard to set up. It's intimidating because there's a lot of wires and I get that. I the first time I looked at it, I was like, really, all these wires? Um, but yeah, it's it's the way that it works to get it hooked up and just make sure that you keep your your hockey puck charged um, when you're not using it and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.